If ulcerative colitis is reversible, why aren't more doctors talking about it? This video is all about debunking myths surrounding ulcerative colitis care and recovery. We're going to talk about the top four reasons why ulcerative colitis patients don't get the help that they need to reverse their symptoms for good. Hi, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri, board certified surgeon specializing in reversing immune inflammation caused by gut microbiome dysfunction. Over the past 13 years, I've seen thousands of success stories from patients and clients who were able to rid themselves of inflammation for good. We've had people around the world in every time zone utilize the knowledge and protocols from our coaching program and clinic to achieve amazing results and reverse ulcerative colitis for good. This video will dive into some very important information that's left out of discussions about ulcerative colitis. We'll also go over the top four reasons why this knowledge isn't widely known. Number one, doctors still blame genetics. There is a major issue I would like to call the knowledge gap. Countless studies show that gut microbiome dysfunction is the real driver of inflammation around IBD, ulcerative colitis included. And this critical insight still hasn't made its way into mainstream medical conversations. Here's a 2020 study that highlights the role of gut microbiome in ulcerative colitis emphasizing how microbiome imbalances contribute to the disease. Here's another 2021 study on how the gut microbiome imbalances contribute to ulcerative colitis progression and affirms that targeted dietary strategies hold promise for more effective personalized solutions. There's also plenty of research highlighting how factors like diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise can heavily influence inflammation in ulcerative colitis. Here's a 2022 study that examines the impact of diet and supplements on ulcerative colitis and highlights how certain components in food can greatly influence the course of the disease, inducing changes in the composition and function of the gut microbiome. And here's a 2020 study discussing the impact of lifestyle factors on UC, emphasizing that exercise may reduce flares and fatigue while obesity, stress, and poor sleep exacerbate symptoms. Yet for some reason, there's a stubborn belief that genetics is the end-all be-all for ulcerative colitis outcomes. It's like saying your genes seal your fate. But here's the thing, most people with ulcerative colitis have had the same genes before they got sick, back when they were still healthy. So what's going on? Let's break it down. Sure, there are several kinds of genes associated with ulcerative colitis, but the truth is that bacterial genomics, the DNA of the bacteria living in your gut, has an even greater impact. This is something I teach my clients in a membership course, and here it is. Even though there are dozens of human genes, recall that I said that these genes could be turned on and off depending on how you behave and respond to triggers. And what are these environmental triggers? These environmental triggers are diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise, the big five. The typical story we hear from most doctors is that genetics cause inflammation, but let me add to the story. Every cell in the body has a nucleus, which contains DNA. This DNA provides the recipe book for various functions in the body, including inflammation. So the genes are the recipe book of sorts. And if you take this recipe book to, let's say, a bakery, they make scones. If you take it to a cafe, they may make soup. So the same recipe book in different parts of the body provides the instructions for different things. Doctors don't fix the microbiome. Doctors don't even know which imbalances are relevant. I'm gonna make this pretty simple. Microbiome imbalances cause inflammation. We know this because 80% of the immune system is in the gut and there are trillions of bacteria, viruses, funguses, and immune cells all interacting to produce inflammation. But here's the problem. Doctors don't fix the microbiome. At least currently, doctors fall into a couple different categories. There are ones that don't even think the microbiome even plays a role in Crohn's disease inflammation. There are GI doctors that know the microbiome plays a role, but don't know what types of imbalances are actually relevant. And then there are ones that sometimes test for imbalances, but cannot predict cause and effect. So therefore they use generic probiotics to fix them. And then there are ones like me who have studied the plasmid level DNA characteristics and phenotypic responses of individual subspecies of bacteria and carefully chose ones that actually move the needle on Crohn's disease inflammation. The gut microbiome recalibration needs to be precise and evidence-based, not random and haphazard. It also needs to take into account individual subspecies within a group of bacteria that actually have the genetic plasmids to solve inflammation. Just because a gut microbiome test say you have dysbiosis or overgrowth or leaky gut doesn't mean you just blindly replace the strains that are low. 
And in fact, that strategy never works. And I get people calling me all the time asking me how to fix these imbalances the right way. To truly address the inflammation behind ulcerative colitis, we need to focus on its root causes. Number two, they don't know about the healing power of phytonutrients for ulcerative colitis. Let's talk about phytonutrients. What are they and why are they important for managing ulcerative colitis? When we design a phytonutrient focused diets for our clients, we carefully consider their unique nutritional needs and any other medical conditions that could be influenced by herbal medicines or natural supplements. Just because something is popular online doesn't mean it's effective or safe. Our goal is to minimize the use of ineffective supplements and instead focus on incorporating superfoods and essential micronutrients directly into the diet. When I talk about micronutrients, I'm referring to vitamins vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients. These are the foundation of a nutrient-rich diet that supports healing. Macronutrients, carbs, fats, and proteins are also just as important. Balancing the right ratios of these nutrients each day can help address metabolic imbalances associated with ulcerative colitis and inflammation. But here's the thing, if you get these ratios wrong, healing won't happen. And that's why it's so important to approach these variables with precision. I actually have an entire video on the ideal diet for ulcerative colitis, so be sure to check that out on the channel. Number three. This is an important one. Doctors and gastroenterologists do not have the time to successfully coach patients. How many of you have been to a gastroenterologist and you get there and the doctor's in and out in 15 minutes? All they do is talk about ordering tests, medications, consultations. Where's the discussion about diet, digestion, sleep, stress, exercise, trauma, supplements, or lifestyle changes. There's none of that. In our clinic's coaching program, it's entirely different. In fact, the average number of communications we have with our coaching clients in the first several weeks of the program is 200 to 300, and that's for each person. Obviously, what I'm describing is an entirely different level of commitment that you'll never see at your doctor's office. We track everything, symptoms, food, sleep, weight, exercise, even bowel movements and poop every single day. And that's exactly what it takes to figure out how to solve ulcerative colitis inflammation. When dealing with ulcerative colitis, every single detail matters. The last thing you want to overlook is something critical that keeps you from healing. Unfortunately, the medical community isn't set up to handle this level of care, and that's the real issue. They simply don't have time. Traditional practices are designed to see you for 15 minutes, order a few tests and prescriptions, and then have you come back in three to six months. And this is why so many people with ulcerative colitis struggle to get better. Most doctors assume it's impossible to reverse ulcerative colitis inflammation, but the truth is you can. Number four, over-reliance on medication. And this could include things like mesalamine, prednisone, steroids, and biologic infusions. And I'll also add the underappreciation of side effects and alternatives. Most of what gastroenterologists learn about treating diseases like ulcerative colitis comes from research studies. These randomized controlled trials are considered the gold standard for medical research, but they cost millions of dollars to conduct. Because of these high costs, the primary funders of these large-scale trials for ulcerative colitis are often pharmaceutical companies. And there's a reason for this. They have a vested interest. When a drug or a biologic for ulcerative colitis is shown to work, they bring it to market, advertise it to gastroenterologists and doctors and patients, and enjoy patent protection and exclusive rights for several years. So let me clarify something. I'm not against these pharmaceuticals. I think medical Medication and even biologics play a vital role in healthcare, including in the treatment of ulcerative colitis, so please don't misinterpret my comments. But my concern lies in how information about treatment options is shared with both doctors and patients. The therapies that get funding show success in clinical trials naturally and receive the most attention and recognition. Unfortunately, alternative solutions like home remedies, natural treatments, probiotics, or herbal medicines are rarely studied in large-scale trials, and these approaches don't have the same financial backing, so they often go unnoticed. Think about it. When's the last time you saw an advertisement for broccoli or some other healthy choice? In some cases, laws and regulations even limit what doctors can discuss regarding these alternatives due to the lack of formal evidence. I've seen colleagues labeled as spreading misinformation for discussing alternative approaches. While protecting patients from misinformation is important, this cautious approach has also stifled legitimate conversations within the medical field. The issue isn't about bad intentions. Everyone involved is trying to do what's best for patients. But the mindset that medication is the only viable long-term solution for ulcerative colitis is deeply ingrained in medical culture. And that's the problem. I'm a Western trained surgeon and I've used medications and surgeries to successfully treat patients. But I also know that there are effective ways to manage and reverse ulcerative colitis, methods that are often overlooked and underutilized in our profession. All right, I hope this video shed some light on these issues. I understand how frustrating it can be if your doctor doesn't provide enough information about the full range of solutions available for ulcerative colitis. And that's why I offer discovery calls to answer questions about our proven methods 
and to help figure out which solutions may work out best for you. If you or someone you know struggles with ulcerative colitis and hasn't found the right treatment information, invite them to watch this video. It could be the step that they need to find relief and healing. Lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Dr. Chanu Dasri with the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.